Welcome back to my channel, Adventures in America. If you are new to my channel, my name is Jocelyn and I'm a dual citizen of the United States and the Philippines. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. I always welcome new subscribers. If you recently traveled in the Philippines, please share your travel experience and let us know what you think of the travel restrictions. Today, we are going to talk about the interagency task force and why it has to be abolished. But before we get started, I'm going to give you a background how the IATF was formed. The IATF or Interagency Task Force on the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases or IATF, it was organized by the Philippine government through its executive and the reason for its formation is to respond to the emerging infectious diseases in the Philippines. So there are actually five executives in this task force. So I'm going to tell you who they are. First one is the overall chairperson who is Rodrigo Duterte. And another person, Secretary Francisco Duque or the Department of Health Chairman. And then Cabinet Secretary Carlo Nograles, the co-chairman and Secretary Roy Simatu of the Department of Energy and Natural Resources, who is the co-chairman, and Secretary Harry Roque, who is the spokesperson. Now, this IATF created two more child agencies, and I'm going to enumerate what the agencies are. The first child agency is the National Task Force Against COVID-19, and the other one is the Joint Task Force COVID-19 shield. Okay, this IATF, they convened last year, January 2020, and they are the main task force in creating travel restrictions for domestic and international passengers, or they are regulating the entry of foreign nationals into the Philippines. As you can see, the IATF is not composed of public or health professionals or those in the medical field except for one chairperson who is the head of the Department of Health. Otherwise, all of these officials governing the entry of travel restrictions are not doing a great job in containing the virus because they are not medical professionals and the travel restrictions are actually not backed by science. Exactly one year ago, this IATF has created a plan. It was in March 25, 2020 when they implemented a plan for containing the virus. On March 25, 2020, or exactly one year ago, the IATF revealed a national action plan to slow down the spreading of COVID-19. The NAP was created to effectively and efficiently implement and decentralize the system of managing the COVID-19 situation. In addition, the IATF created a COVID-19 National Task Force headed by the Department of National Defense Secretary Delphine Lorenzana, which handles the operational command. At the same time, the IATF became the policy making body of operations, while the National Incident Command administers the daily concerns and operations. There's another child entity of this IATF, and it's the Joint Task Force. COVID-19 SHIELD. The Joint Task Force COVID-19 SHIELD headed by Police Lieutenant General Binag is a task force intended to enforce quarantine protocols in border checkpoints and streets and maintain peace, order, and security throughout the country to help control the spread of COVID-19. The task force is composed of the PNP or the Philippine National Police, the Armed Forces of the Philippines, the Philippine Coast Guard, the Bureau of Fire Protection and Barangay Tanods. Now we know that the interagency task force is mostly composed of government executives or police and military executives. Here are the reasons why the IATF should be abolished. My number one reason is that the IATF is not composed of medical or public health professionals. They're composed of government executives who have no medical or health background. If they are imposing travel restrictions, there must be a data or study why those travel restrictions must be implemented. The number two reason is that 
the travel restrictions are always given on a very, very short notice. For example, resolution number 103 restricting the travel of foreign nationals and they are only allowing Filipino nationals starting March 22nd until April 21st. Okay, but before that, the National Task Force Against the COVID-19 issued a memorandum circular, and it's circular number five, and it was issued on March 16th. That has to be effective on March 20th. Now, they are only allowing overseas Filipino workers, not the non-OFW. And then suddenly, the Bureau of Immigration came out with the implementation of the resolution of the interagency task force. They are now modifying. And in that modification, resolution number 103 came out stating that all Filipinos are now allowed to travel, including non-overseas Filipino workers. And it was issued on March 18th. Now, there are two task force that are trying to implement two different travel restrictions and if you are a filipino trying to get home and now you are restricted to get home because the flights are canceled if the task force is going to implement a completely new travel restriction at least give it a month or a 30-day notice the third reason why the iatf should be abolished is that it is not serving its purpose one year ago they laid out a plan and now one year later the covid cases are surging so that means that all of these restrictions implementations all of these lockdowns curfews are not doing well in the philippines number four the travel restrictions that they are imposing for international passengers or for inbound passengers are not backed by science for example Currently, if you are traveling to the Philippines, you have to book a quarantine facility for six nights. And I'm not sure why it was on the sixth day that they will implement a swab test, but why it has to be on the sixth day. Why it can't be upon arrival, you are going to do a mandatory swab test. But a lot of Filipinos abroad or a lot of foreign nationals who are qualified or eligible to travel they were already vaccinated they already secured a negative covid test and once they arrive in the philippines they will still have to undergo a mandatory swab test and quarantine so it really doesn't matter if you already have a negative test or you have already been vaccinated you will still have to undergo swab test and quarantine and also local government units will still have to impose their own travel restrictions so you have no complete control or you have no idea what's going to happen when you arrive. There is this level of uncertainty or sometimes anxiety that rules can change anytime. And by the time you travel, you are not eligible as a passenger. Lastly, I created two videos and the first video that I created is why Philippines has the most restrictive travel restrictions and also there is another video that i made five reasons not to travel in the philippines it's not because i hate the philippines it's because it is too much hassle to travel this year and we are not sure how long the travel restrictions will be in place it can be extended or it can totally be changed overnight so i'm just telling you if your travel is really not essential please postpone your travel and just communicate with your loved ones in the philippines virtually if you recently traveled in the philippines please post your travel experience and share what you think about the travel restrictions i hope everyone is staying safe and have a great day